The day today is Saturday the 16th of May. Um, and um, so I think that's week nine now for me here um, in Mallorca, which is part of Spain. Um, and I heard this term the other day on a podcast I was listening to, um, which was the One Commune podcast. Um, I don't know if you're aware of the um, commune is um, online. There's, I think it's under onecommune.com or something. It's um, basically they have loads of um, free courses and free yoga videos and everything that they offer. Um, each time they publish a new training, they offer it for free to start off with. And then if you want to get access to past ones, you have to pay. And so um, I've been doing a lot of their free stuff and I've been listening to their podcasts a lot too. Um, and um, I find it really interesting and really helpful and it's always quite positive and uplifting as well. Um, and I heard this term the other day and it is coerced monasticism. And the term was used um, about now, about quarantine, how it's a bit like monasticism, but it's not voluntary, it's coerced. And I thought, yeah, I quite like that. That, um, that fits um, my experience and how I'm finding it. Um, and I wanted to talk about why I, why I quite like it, really, because um, all of my life, I've kind of had this romantic notion in my head, yeah, that if all of the things in my life that were important to me and that kept me in the mainstream world, yeah, so it kept me in the world where um, going to work and nine to five and, you know, showing up for people um, is necessary, is important. If I didn't, if I didn't have those things in my life, so I guess like if, um, you know, if the relationship that I was in that I considered to be really important fell apart and maybe, you know, my then friendships um, that I wanted to, to then lean on for support weren't there and I kind of found myself feeling isolated and alone. If I didn't have emotional commitments to other people that required my presence every day, um, then I would be quite tempted to become a nun or to go and live in a monastery. I really like the idea of living in an institution like that where your sole purpose is focused on worship and on being a good and then a better person and uh, and how the focus is all about service to others as well and how can we make the world a better place and i really like that idea and the idea of, of just being in a peaceful calm environment where harsh world words are not welcome and where it's all about compassion and love. And maybe this is like an ideal, idealized, you know, romanticized version of a monastery because, you know, not all monasteries are um, beautiful, lovely places. And there are many different um, forms of religion that are practiced in monasteries as well, depending on what form of Christianity. And some of them are, you know, quite harsh and, and quite austere and quite difficult, and others are a lot more comfortable. Like there is um, a, um, a monastery or a nunnery um, somewhere in America, I can't remember exactly where, um, I think it's in America, it might not even be in America actually, it might be in like Costa Rica um, or in Mexico, some, somewhere like that. Um, where they're a bit more liberal in their kind of like approach to things. Um, especially to like marijuana because this is a monastery um, and it's all about worshipping marijuana which is quite a bizarre thing I thought but it was really interesting and it's like basically they worship the plant because the plant has so many healing properties to it yeah um, and and so because it can help so many people especially people with cancer whether that's in terms of healing the cancer or in terms of pain relief because it, you know different types of marijuana um, the THC or the CBD can do different things for the body and they can also help people with many, many other conditions. And so these, these nuns, they basically, their whole life is all about growing and cultivating this plant and then um, kind of like bottling it um, in tinctures and in oils to then distribute to, to people. And I just thought that was a really lovely, beautiful 
um, kind of way of approaching that form of medicine. Um, and I think if I if I were to um, to want to need to rely on like CBD or THC for healing, um, I would like it to come from a place like that where it's been made with love and care and reverence and, and it's been worshipped as it grew and it's been prayed over as opposed to um, a place where it's all about the money and it's just kind of like come through a factory and there's not much love involved. Um, and so the idea of like being in coerced monasticism um, is, is like this experience, this like quarantine um, period has kind of given me the opportunity to, to go to a place and be in a space that I wouldn't have allowed myself to be in previously. And there are many reasons why I should have been in this space before. Um, but I always resisted it because I was kind of scared of the idea of being at home that much and not going out and not interacting um, and, and just resting and chilling and taking the pressure off myself. And, um, and it's been really nice to kind of not have that option. So I don't have to feel guilty about not going out because I haven't been allowed to go out. I don't, I don't have to feel selfish for not going out because, you know, it was considered selfish to go out um and so i kind of like yeah i feel like um this this time of quietness and stillness and being slower um and that's not to say i haven't been active in my own way inside because i've been very active i've been very proactive i've you know made sure that that my self-care is like at an all-time high and anything that i can add in um, I do, I try to, and every time I think of new things, I try and, and try and put those in too, and then trying to get a balance, obviously, because, you know, um, nobody's perfect, and one has to remember to do these things, and some days you just really can't be faffed, um, and, and it's like, how do you do the self-love things when you're really not in the mood or you don't have any energy, and then what's the right option to do then? Because if you're feeling like you just want to curl up and go to sleep, then is doing a yoga practice um, or doing some free dance or, you know, ar around your, your space, is that really self-love or not in that instance? And trying to find out what well, what is the right answer, because obviously if you let yourself get away with not doing the, or if, this is a personal thing, if, you, if I let myself get away with not doing the yoga or the dance um, for you know more than one day or whatever then that becomes a habit and then the exercise will go out of my routine completely but it's, a, it's finding a balance in in terms of what is right for me and learning to listen to myself more deeply and not just push on through because um i do have a tendency to just push on through and to 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 believe that i am strong enough to cope with everything because mentally i am very very strong i've had to deal with a lot of things in my life um, and, and I also always managed to kind of like move forwards and to process them and to, to, you know, kind of either deal with them or previously, well now I deal with them instantly if I can, um, as much as possible. When in the past I used to just chuck them, you know, into the backpack on my back and carry them and I would carry more and more and more. And I always went out of my way before I started working professionally with people as like a therapist and a counsellor. Um, I, I used to like take on board people's stuff, I used to welcome it, so with like friends I would be like, yeah, talk to me, share, share your stuff with you, it's okay, I can handle it, you know, I've seen everything, I'm not, I'm not going to judge you because I've been there, done that, and I've seen it all, and, and then I used to kind of like try to take it from them so that I could offer them some solace and comfort, but I never really understood that, that it's not about taking it from someone else and then putting it into yourself even if you if you, if you do believe yourself strong enough to take it which I did I always believe myself I am strong enough to take it you know I'm invincible when it comes to stuff like that and um whereas now I realize that no you hold space for it and then you like you cleanse it so it moves through you it doesn't get stuck inside of you um and and so like this, this period of time has really given me a chance to, to do more of that for myself in my self-care practices. 
and to to look at how I can better support others as well um, as they navigate their way through this journey because you know this time at the moment is it's different and it's challenging and it's tough and it's opened up a lot of time and space for people that they wouldn't necessarily have had and when we can't go dashing here there and everywhere um, in order to occupy ourselves and when we're having a bad day when we can't just go shopping and buy something to like you know fill that self-love gap when we can't meet up with a friend or go to the gym or go for a walk or something um, or go to the cinema or a museum or whatever it's hard because we then have to have to deal with it on our own we have to mother ourselves and um, that's something that a lot of us struggle with is that self-mothering like how can we be the best kindest most gentle person um, to ourselves and so in this time of coerced monasticism I have learned to do more of that for myself like previously I've practiced more how can I do this for other people how can I offer other people that, that guidance and that healing and that support um, but like I, I've and I've done it for myself too but within a within a boundary like as in as in, in terms of um, like I've done a certain amount for myself but I've not gone too far because I've thought oh maybe that's a bit selfish and I've got other commitments in my life that I have to attend to so I can't just think about myself all the time there's other people I have to look after and you know all of these activities that I have to do I have to show up in so many ways and this this time of being at home and being slowed down and having those commitments taken away because they're not options um, has really allowed me to do more of that self-reflection um, and and so it's kind of it's been that that monastic retreat um, that I've always dreamed of just inside a different space because obviously um, my ideal romanticized um, monastery would be in a beautiful place in the middle of nowhere surrounded by rolling hills and maybe like you know sheep out on those hills with little bells around their neck um, and it would be like kind of oldie worldy and like trapped in time and inside it would be this beautiful stone building with central heating and creature comforts like that um, but everything would be you know like exposed wooden beams and stone floors with rugs on and um, open fires and you know like an old big old kitchen with an argo in it and an open fire um, and just things like that and a beautiful chapel a beautiful small intimate chapel that is like always candlelit and has exquisite stained glass windows um, and this wonderful sisterhood of women who deeply deeply care for each other and support each other um, and it's not quite that um, but I, I have my own miniature sisterhood um, and I have um, I have a version of stained glass windows because I have the windows that I look out at the world at and how I choose to then look through those windows um, is their, their staining in a way um, and my, my, my reverence, my worship is, is worship to the space that I live in like I have been wor worshipping my home a lot more recently um, showing her so much more love than before so much more respect um like making sure she is clean and airy and smells nice and everything is arranged beautifully and these things have always been important to me but i put a lot more focus on that recently because like i am here all the time so the nicer it is the nicer that experience will be um and i've also been trying to worship myself in a um, in a like spiritual heart-centered way not in an egotistical way um, because it's like the more we are able to love ourselves and the healthier and stronger we are then the 
more support we can offer to others. And the more we, we look after ourselves and we focus on our spiritual um, growth and evolution, then the more service we can offer to others and to the world um, moving through this time and moving out of it as well, hopefully. Um, so yeah, it's just my perspective on the whole kind of like monastic thing. Um, and how by reframing um, one can experience this time as a beautiful calm healing space as opposed to a world filled with threat and violence and fear and I think that's really important because there is a lot of scary stuff being said at the moment and you know I myself fall victim to it um, not on a daily basis anymore. At the beginning of this experience, it was pretty much daily, if not, uh, you know, hourly. Um, but at now I've kind of, I've moved away from that because I guess I've heard most of the um, theories out there. And um, although I haven't made up my mind about many, many things, I'm kind of like on both sides, really. I get arguments for both sides when I get them. And it's also, it's quite, um, it's challenging, but it's also useful because I live with somebody else who has a completely different point of view to me. So whereas I am leaning in one direction, which is um, all of the information and all of the theories that aren't in the mainstream media, um, there's a person that I am, that I live with, um, is more inclined to believe the news um, and what is accessible there and isn't really open to to other information and that's frustrating because obviously then we can't sit down and have an in-depth discussion about it which I would love to do um, but it kind of it keeps me grounded and it keeps me centered it keeps me in the center of the information and it keeps me questioning it more and I guess it also makes sure that I don't miss anything out because I am not following the mainstream media um, very much really at all. Um, you know, if I do, it's more by accident than by design. And so um, there are those threats, those things, that information that creeps in, but I am not preoccupied by it anymore. Most of my occupation is in listening to and studying more of more uplifting things and how, how we can move through this time um, as and, and become better people and then be more prepared for what what's to come afterwards and um, know what to expect as well really because I don't think this is the end of it by any means I think this is the beginning of a very different world um, and that is something that um, will continue to take time to get used to and for me, while I get used to and assimilate all of that information, the best place to be um, in that regard is in my monastic space. Um, and so, yeah, I think it's important to, to leave that monastery um, for regular exercise and fresh air but I don't think it's necessary to rush back to to all of the other things that we were doing before um, that have been allowed. Yeah, like um, you know, going out for coffee or going out for like a meal or something, and the different shops that are all open. It's like as much as I want to give my love and support to local businesses, I. I also don't really feel like that world is is the right world anymore. And as much as people depend on on those businesses for their own livelihood and to feed their families and to keep a roof over their own head, I I would prefer the world to move in a different direction and for things that are based on pure vanity and greed and self indulgence to pivot and become more holistic based really. So it's like, you know, there is, there is beauty 
and there is worth in going for an acupuncture treatment or in going for a massage if it is a proper therapeutic massage but going to get one's nails done um, is that really necessary you know do we really need to be putting those toxins onto our bodies um, and blocking off the oxygen flow in our nails um, you know just to feel good about ourselves I don't believe we do um, you know as nice as painted nails are and I used to love having my nails painted it's like the the price that you pay for that for your health in the long run is not really worth the temporary fix that having pretty nails provides um, so I urge everybody who hasn't yet embraced um, the monastic side of this experience to dig deeper into that and to really really um, take advantage of the rest of this time of rest before we're all forced to go back to work and life um, picks up speed again so I hope you have a beautiful slow and peaceful weekend um, and I hope you can find beauty in this experience as well as anxiety and worry and fear.